my name is Vicky Russell and on behalf of the leadership team here at Resurrection, I welcome you here tonight. This evening we gather, we gather for the celebration of the blessing and consecration of our new church at Resurrection. And as we gather, we acknowledge the Kulin Nation, the traditional owners of this land. On this special occasion, we welcome our invited guests, including Archbishop Dennis Hart, the principal celebrant for our Mass this evening, the Vicar General, Monsignor Greg Bennett, Father Yang, the Master of Ceremonies, together with our many priests from the Melbourne and Sale Diocese. We also welcome members of our government, including federal, state and local government representatives. Also joining us this evening are many of the staff from the various archdiocesan agencies. We also welcome our architect, our very talented Mark Needham, his family and his invited guests. Gathered with us this evening are many of the tradespeople and the artists who worked so enthusiastically to create our new church, including staff from the Lord's construction firm. And of course we acknowledge the presence here tonight of so many of our parishioners as well as our friends from surrounding parishes. Our celebration this evening is the culmination of the hopes, the dreams and the efforts of so many people who have played their part in producing this beautiful worship in space, dedicated to the honour and the glory of our God. And so I welcome each and every one of you here tonight to our new church and this celebration. We are indeed blessed by your presence. Please stand as we begin our celebration. Church is a permanent worship of God. 
The ceremony explains very clearly that this is a holy place for prayer and contemplation, a place of silence where ordinary conversations belong outside. It's for the conversations we have and the prayer we have with our God. So I do thank you with your great faith as now we proceed to the sprinkling of holy water remembering our baptism. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in this solemn rite of dedication, let us ask the Lord our God to bless this water created by his hand. It's a sign of our repentance, a reminder of our baptism, and a symbol of the cleansing of these walls and this altar. May the grace of God help us to remain faithful members of his church, open to the spirit we have received as we pray in silence. God of mercy, you call every creature to the light of life and surround us with such great love that when we stray, you continually lead us back to Christ our head. For you have established an inheritance of such mercy that those sinners who pass through water made sacred die with Christ and rise restored as members of his body and heirs of this eternal, his eternal covenant. Bless this water, sanctify it, as it is sprinkled upon us and throughout this church, make it a sign of the saving waters of baptism, by which we become one in Christ, a temple of your Spirit. May all here today, and all those in days to come, who will celebrate your mysteries in this church, be united at last in the holy city of your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
God, the Father of mercy, who dwell in this house of prayer, may the grace of the Holy Spirit cleanse us, for we are the temple of his presence. Amen. 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 Amen.
and children old enough to understand it. He read from the book from early morning till noon. All the people listened attentively to the book of the Lord. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden dais, erected for the purpose, in full view of all the people, since he stood higher than all the people. Ezra opened the book, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people raised their hands and answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and faced to the ground, prostrated themselves before the Lord. And Ezra read from the law of God, translating and giving the sense, so that the people understood what was read. Then Nehemiah, his excellency, and Ezra, priest and scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, This day is sacred to the Lord your God. Do not be mindful, do not weep. For the people were all in tears as they listened to the words of the Lord. He then said, Go, eat the fat, drink the sweet wine, and send a portion to the man who has nothing prepared ready. For this day is sacred to our Lord. Do not be sad. The joy of the Lord is your stronghold. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> St. Paul to the Corinthians. The blessing cup 
that we bless is the communion with the blood of Christ. And the bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that, though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. Look at the other Israel, the race, where those who eat the sacrifices are in communion with the altar. Does this mean that the food sacrificed to idols has a real value or that the idol itself is real? Not at all. It simply means that the sacrifices they offer to demons who are not God. I have no desire to see you in communion with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot take your share at the table of the Lord and at the cup and at the table of demons. The word of the Lord. This is a moment of tremendous rejoicing. Every time I, I've come once or twice already into the church tonight, every time, Father Brian, I've seen new things. <laughs> and that's appropriate because a church is above all a place of God's being with and living with us in among the homes of our parish. And I do congratulate you all in resurrection for what you've done and for what you've achieved. The likeness of construction and the way in which the church looks as if it's always there. The minor, the cross, the means of our redemption. But then if you look out to the back where I stand, the cross is in gold, the sign of resurrection. And that's a reminder, of course, that this is the place where God comes to us 
It's a meeting place. It's a dwelling, living place where God can be found. It's a place where God is active, whether in the sacrifice of the Mass, whether in contemplative prayer, whether in all the sacraments. That God is here among us, His people. It's not just a building that's there and people can say, oh, that's got a special purpose. Doesn't that look beautiful? It's a real active place where God comes to us as we are and where we can find Him as we are <clears throat> and where in finding Him we can be drawn like a magnet to the wonder and beauty of God. And when I celebrated confirmation over many years over in the former church uh, when the principal noted the place was how close we were to each other and how much love there was. Now we've come bringing that same love and bringing that same intrepid and remarkable searching for God into this new place with which we hope we will be spiritually enriched. You'll notice how the ceremony unfolds tonight. Uh, it unfolded with the sprinkling of holy water. Water reminding of our baptism, the biblical image of the water coming out of the side of the temple, uh, the altar of the Eucharist being the source of all the life that comes from baptism. And that is visibly and effectively there in front of you. We sprinkled the walls because this is the place of God's holy people and I tried to sprinkle as many of you as I could because we are reminded that in baptism God takes over our life. He gives us a new identity. He gives us a new hope. And then last of all, we sprinkle the altar as a preparation for the consecration, the anointing, the setting apart for God of what takes place and will take place for years to come at this altar. So immediately after this homily, uh, we'll profess our faith. And then uh, we'll invite uh, the saints of heaven because the saints have succeeded in doing what we're trying to do. We're trying to live full human lives, lives which are profitable for our families and our community, lives which speak of the activity and wonder of God as we go out into the community of Keysborough and Noble Park. And that, of course, means that we draw strength from their prayers too. After that, we'll go to the anointing of the, to the long prayer of consecration, which speaks of God as the source of holiness and power, and it speaks of the Eucharist as the source and font of the true Christian spirit. And after that, of course, <clears throat> we've asked the Lord, the Holy Spirit, uh, to come and be with us. Send your spirit from heaven to make this church a never holy place. Then we illustrate what we've said in word. The altar will be anointed as you and I were anointed in baptism and confirmation. The chrism that used uh, to anoint the altar is the same when my brother priests and myself were anointed in priesthood and I was anointed uh, to be a bishop, uh, which we were all anointed in, in confirmation. The walls of the church, you can see two crosses there and two here, and they're anointed. That's a sign, of course, that this is not just a meeting room, it's a special, holy, wonderful place where we can come and meet our God. And I think we have to help each other to do that by our spirit of prayer. Then, of course, incense, a sign of worship and fragrance. The altar is incensed and the people are, in a sense, moving around the church. And that's a sign that whenever we come here, our prayers go up to God. And they go up immediately, just like that smoke rises up. And God listens and God hears. And finally, of course, the altar is clothed and the candles are lit as a reminder that Christ is the light of the world. The risen Christ, whose rising we celebrated last Saturday evening and Sunday morning, that light of Christ is the permanent ability of God to give light and hope to human hearts. Finally, then of course, I do pay tribute to what you have achieved here over these years. The obvious faith with which our parish is enriched, uh, 
the great work of Father Brian, together with Father Sang and Father Jeff Dunock, the work of so many people in the community and the leadership that you show. We're united in faithfulness to Jesus Christ, in oneness with Pope Francis, and with all God's people to continue the journey which has been begun so well. May the Lord bless you and may the light of the Holy Spirit fill your hearts and kindle in them the fire of constant love and zeal to live and spread the gospel. Pope Francis says we have to go out to the peripheries. We have to bring the gospel to those who long for it and need it. And that we will do by our prayer here, by our worship, and by our example in the community. And may this place therefore be a place of light in our times of hesitation and darkness, a, time, a place of hope leading us forward, and a place always of mission where we know each of us is sent out into the community of every day to witness to the presence and loving and saving activity of the risen Christ in the world of today. May Jesus live in our hearts forever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, through God, through God, through God, God, the God from God made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For our sin and for our salvation, the end of our pain. And by the Holy Spirit is in time for the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us ask the saints to support our prayers to God the Father Almighty, who has made the hearts of his people thankful temples of the Spirit.
and with gladness your city of peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. signs of the mystery of Christ and his church. Lord, may our prayer ascend as incense in your sight. As this building is filled with fragrance, so may your church fill the world with the fragrance of Christ.
Easter.
For any brothers and sisters that I sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord take the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of the Lord. May the gifts of your joyful church be acceptable to you, O Lord, so that your people gathering in this holy house may come through these mysteries to everlasting salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. For it is everywhere to give you thanks, Father, your most holy. For you have made the whole world a temple of your glory, that your name and everywhere be extolled. Yet you allow us to consecrate you at places for the given ministry. And so we dedicate joyfully to your majesty this house of prayer built by human labor. Here is foreshadowed the mystery of the true temple. Here is prefigured the heavenly Jerusalem. For you made the body of your Son, born of the tender virgin, the temple consecrated to you, by which the fullness of the Godhead might dwell. You also established the church as a holy city, built upon the foundation of the apostles, with Christ Jesus himself, the chief cornerstone. Our city to be built of chosen stone, given life by the Spirit, and abundant by charity. Where for endless ages you will be long in all, and the light of Christ will shine on him forever. To you, O Lord, with all the angels and saints, we give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, my assistant bishops and all those who are holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, 
And blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, and of these your servants within the spirit of faith, have offered you this church in honour of the resurrection of the Saviour, and built it with power and slavery. <laughs> be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up to you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice and his holy and venerable hands. Once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The ministry of faith. And we in this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, life, and peace. For us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercy, righteously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellius, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into, your com into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. For so whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, 
bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And for my God in teaching, we dare to say, Amen. into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
you do it? Can I, get, I have it here? Yeah, I get a communion to the choir. conscious that uh, there's been a lot of sad events in the news of late. Planes, plane disasters, terrorism, cyclones, a bride in New South Wales to be married tomorrow has heard that have been murdered. 
I think the churches here in Melbourne that have been burnt in these last uh, past week over Easter, but also the tragic event of the South Sydney's community in the western suburbs this week, we hold them very much in our prayer. It tells us Good Friday continues. It's not over for some people where they bear the cross of suffering. But we are called to be the Easter people, the people of good news, the people of hope. And it's uh, with great news that we celebrated the many people who over Easter searched that young boy in Ilden and found him. And the joy of his family and the community has been quite overwhelming. And so for us tonight is another good news story for us, the people of Keysborough, the Catholic community of the Resurrection Parish. For this district, but also for the Church of Melbourne, this is truly a good news story, a story of resurrection, a story of life and hope. So I'd like to thank you, Archbishop Dennis Hart, for leading us tonight in this lovely liturgy, but also for your support and encouragement in fulfilling this dream. I think you planted the scene when uh, uh, Cardinal Powell, Archbishop Powell, appointed me. Uh, when I was told I was coming here in, the, in, in 1999, uh, Dennis' Vicar General said, the Archbishop would like a new church. <laughs> I said, we'll see about that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Did you know then, Dennis, you're going to be the Archbishop? I'm not so sure how the Holy Spirit works. But uh, I thank you, Dennis, for your support of me, but also in this uh, planning and building of this church. I thank the priests who are gathered with us today, uh, and to Father Yang, who has uh, sent us all sorts of things through the liturgy. So thank you, Yang, for your support and being here so early today to lead us in this wonderful celebration. Our regional bishop, Peter Elliott, was here on the feast of our anniversary, the 19th of January, and he came and celebrated with us. And uh, he's also met with us numerous occasions to see that we're getting it right. And uh, he also told us about the importance of getting a relic. And I thought relics were the old prince. <laughs> oh, Jim Pierce, I didn't say such a thing. <laughs> But I've since learned that relics are parts of the saints. And so, uh, of course, just as that conversation happened, Pope Francis declared uh, Pope John Paul II and uh, Pope John XXIII saints. And so I wrote to the correspondent with Archbishop Dennis Hart and said, could we get a relic of John XXIII? And so that is placed in our altar, being one of the first parishes, I believe, in Australia, that we, uh, our new, the old chapel, little chapel, was built in the vision of Vatican II. And so we thought how important that Pope John XXIII be honoured in this hall. And so we had to put the, the uh, relic in on the Friday night, the altar was sealed. Sunday afternoon, Vicky goes, uh oh, Brian, guess what? And I said, what? She goes, We've got an email from the Archbishop. I'm going, so? Saying, look after the relic till Easter. I'll place it in on Friday night at the installation. <laughs> I felt sick, didn't I? Thinking, oh. <laughs> so I phoned Dennis, our Archbishop, very early on the Tuesday morning and uh, said, um, Dennis, you know that email you sent us? Um, slight problem, the relic's in. And I'm not sure what we do now. And the Archbishop graciously said, let sleeping saints rest. <laughs> Which I feel very pastoral of you. Because I really had no idea how I was going to cut a hole in there. Because I'm not a handy man, so I'm really grateful for that. Uh, uh, but it's a great story as well. But I'd just like to say there have been many people who have been part of this uh, church. I'd like to thank the Archdiocese. There are so many people there. There's great wisdom for the support, the encouragement, the advice and wisdom. To Greg, our Vicar General, for your support, Greg, at times, uh, over this uh, uh, time of building our church. I thank Bishop Vincent Long and Bishop Peter Elliott, who've both been such key supporters in fundraising, dances, and all sorts of things. But to Francis Moore, Adrian Clett, Chris Young, Dermot Cannon, Grace Dean, and Jared Colwell, uh, Greg Pullen, Jeff Crawford, the CDF, Tony, our, our regional rep here, uh, CCI, Catholic Church Insurance, who no doubt have had a busy time, uh, and our regional rep as well. Thank you for your encouragement and support of us. Our school, many years ago, when our government was throwing out money to build schools, uh, to revamp them, and uh, Steve Bellasini, our principal, found Mark Meaden as our architect, and Mark received the great things at our school. And so it was then time to extend our little chapel, which we've named the little chapel after uh, Archbishop Frank Little, whose seventh anniversary was just last week. And uh, Frank was often out here, and he blessed the ground for this uh, community began, uh, Cardinal Knox called it a parish, and under Frank's uh, watch, this parish grew. And so uh, in that time, Mark worked very hard. We did the plans to renovate the, uh, the little chapel, but as you may be aware, it became heritage listed, which meant we couldn't touch it. Uh, for its beauty, we give thanks today. But at the time, we were also meeting with Mark, and so then began its new church. And what had been a sacred site for us, and it's been some people saddened to leave the little chapel, uh, knowing it's held them for such significant occasions. 
And we ritualise that on the weekend of uh, moving in here the week before Christmas, trying to honour the Spirit of God that has been here for 41 years, and that Spirit continues here. And so Mark Meaden, uh, I think, is an amazing man, our architect, who uh, came to meetings with uh, the parish team, the parish pastoral council, the liturgy team, our musicians and singers and our sacristans, and said, what is important? What are the things that we need to do here? Uh, and I think, Mark, what you have achieved is truly amazing. Surely Mark is sitting, but uh, it is truly amazing. There we are. Thanks, Mark. And so uh, when we went to the tender meeting for tenders, uh, there were four or five that put in. We were very excited and came home very flat. The prices came in between four and six million, and that wasn't quite in our price range. So Mark began negotiating with Lloyd's uh, construction and working with about changes and rectifying and changing things so it could be more in our price range. And uh, what great work and hours went into that. Uh, Mark began uh, conversations uh, with all those who are part of this community uh, and listened so well. But in working with Mark, Vicky and I have met uh, so many talented and gifted people uh, through his uh, working with them. These piezo walls are from earth, they're just common earth. The soil board and throwing a bit of concrete and then ran together. It's quite extraordinary to see this being created, was amazing. So, Peter and team, thank you so much for these wonderful calls of life. There's a lot of metal lighting and seats that uh, George has done and his team as well. So thank you to all those who have been part of all the metal construction. There is a lot of metal also in this building. The altar, the lectern, the chair, the tabernacle, the sanctuary lamp by Alan Greig, an absolute artist, Alan, uh, who has does, done so much work in creativity. And so we thank you. I know we've had to push you a few times, but uh, well done, Alan. The stations of the cross so beautifully on our wall, the cross that Archbishop already mentioned, but also our oil bottles that have up here. Uh, Kathy Sweeney, a great discovery, has uh, created these so beautifully, Kathy. So thank you for the many hours you've also placed in. Uh, there is the, the sound, the multimedia, electronics. Uh, so to Mike, to Levy and, his, and Nicole, thank you so much for the great work that you've done for our church, who's been here over many times for our celebrations. I think the gardens were spoken about with uh, Sharon Bell and Chris Cook, uh, and uh, our scripture garden to be out there, the olive trees have arrived. So thank you, Chris, and a lot of work has happened and will continue to happen. Our baptism font, the candles, is, uh, so much has, has happened, as the Archbishop said, each time you move through this place, you see something a bit different. So I do hope you take the time uh, to, to witness what is truly beautiful in this place. So thank you. I'd also like to say to uh, Mark's family, uh, thank you for sharing your husband and father with us. He's almost been a charging for board for being here so often, all right? So uh, Al, all the best, and uh, I'm sure there's still a lot of work happening, but we do, Mark, thank you so much for your hours and well beyond the call and, uh, and duty. And as uh, Bishop Alex sort of said when you met with him and did your homework, uh, Bishop Alex said to me, Brian, you've not only unearthed a great architect, you've unearthed an artist for us. So I think that's very true. So our appreciation. Uh, Daniel Murray, who's here, who's also had his second child uh, in this time, uh, was appointed to the, as site manager. Gent uh, Mark is a, uh, Daniel is a gentle giant, big burly fella, and as gentle as. So I think I just saw a few tears a couple of times. But Daniel, you've been so obliging and uh, accountable. You said there's a funeral coming in, work stop. It was just amazing, even when they worked to such a tight schedule. Uh, and he was just so obliging in everything, keeping all the workmen, uh, work crews on their toes. And so, uh, but every person on this site has been so polite and generous and certainly been so hard working and many of you have witnessed that. I asked Daniel some time ago if this job is any different from others and he said, well, most of our building is building places for work. And he said, but this is one of my favourite because it's for the community. He said, my other favourite was St Paul's School for the Blind, which uh, you could one day believe to go and work and say, when you do a building that's for the community, it is just extraordinary and such a, a great experience. So, Daniel, you've been that for us as well, so thank you. 
I would also, uh, in that time, um, have to sort of say there's been a team of uh, Lloyds and members that we've worked with. We started fortnightly meeting every week because I think we liked each other so much. And so uh, it was great. So I thank you uh, to each of you who've been part of that. So Vicky was part of that. Mark, Chris Young from the Archdiocese. And Chris, you are an extraordinary representative of our Archdiocese. And we thank you generously for the great work you've done for us and the insights you've brought. To Lloyds, uh, Luke Levy. Did you have another child this time, Luke? Or that's already beforehand? I'm not sure, but there's a few, a few there. Aidan Woodhouse, uh, who couldn't be with us, and Mick Lisa, thank you for your dedication and, and uh, support of our community. But I love the passion with which all that you have spoken, your desire to serve our community, and in doing so, serving us, serving our church, and of course, serving our God. So thank you to all who have worked so hard and so many hours to get us in at, uh, at Christmas time. On the 2nd of January this year, that very hot weekend, I celebrated our first wedding here. The night before we had a rehearsal, I went into the sacristy, the door closed, and I was locked in. <laughs> I didn't panic. I thought, there's still people in here. There's a, the mother of the groom and the grandmother. I'm going, hello, hello, and no response. So I thought, it's okay. I have a tap of water and air conditioning. But eventually they did hear me open the door and just laugh and thought, oh, we thought you'd gone. <laughs> I thought, yes, yeah, in the sacristy. So uh, that was a very funny story. The lock was fixed for next week. But I'm very proud to say that this church of ours, is, uh, and Mark's design, is uh, Australian built. The only thing that has come from overseas is this floor, uh, which I think came from China. Uh, some of that arrived broken, which took a bit longer, but everything else that you see here is from Australia. Some have come from overseas from Tassie, but we include, include them in part of our story. <laughs> so in building this church, we've certainly supported support local industry to support local people. And it's been really great to do that. You hear people just say, oh, my cousin or my friend who was doing this in Druin for your church. It's been really lovely to hear the outreach that has been to the wider community. So that's been a great exercise for us. For our parish, you are truly amazing. While we were filled with joy and hope in the coming to our new church, there was sadness as in leaving the little chapel. It served us well for so many years. We celebrated our good times and our sorrowful times. And it's that same spirit that fills this church tonight and over the Easter weeks, but also over the weeks since we've been joining us here to celebrate God's love for us. So thank you to all who have been part of the planning uh, and shaping of our church from this day forward. This time in 2013, the committee from the Vietnamese community came and met with Vicky and I saying, we want to have a dance to raise money. And uh, they booked the Annabelle reception, and within weeks we had it sold out to 700 people, and they showed for us uh, the Vietnamese culture. It was the most outstanding night. And uh, since then, our Vietnamese community stood up in leadership of this community, and on the Saturday they made 40,000 at first fundraiser, which was fantastic. From there, their next night actually is on the 24th of April, and there are tickets on sale as well if you like. <laughs> but from the Vietnamese, the Sri Lankans, the Italians, uh, the Mauritian, all did dances, and I think the Indians are doing one later this year. So it's wonderful to show off the richness and culture of our diverse community. So I thank all of you who've been part of the fundraising. So many of you have bought different items in honour of your loved ones, both living or deceased. You've been so generous, and we appreciate all that you've done. Uh, a special mention to Hedy, who has uh, worked on every committee of fundraising for raffles, international kitchens. Thank you, Hedy, for your amazing work and love of our community. I thank the parish pastoral council over the years, some whose terms of office have cut, been, been and gone, and others have come new, who simply have embraced the work and the dream of our church. To our parish staff over the years, uh, our secretaries Lily and Peter, Annette and Talia, finances with Peter and Riven, our pastoral workers Marge and Michelle, uh, Vicky, our pastoral associate, uh, for your wisdom, insight, knowledge and calmness in keeping me grounded uh, in this time of building. Many priests say it's very difficult. Wow, oh, that was easy. Get Vicky and Mark on it, you're fine. No worries at all. But I remember going to meetings and I'd be talking about dollars with O's and O's and O's. I did not know what they talked about, really, but anyway, Vicky told me what they were doing. So, uh, but thank you, Vicky. Vicky has now handed over that role of past associate and now parish manager for our two communities here at the Resurrection of St Anthony's. Uh, and Vicky, we thank you for the great leadership you've shown us over, I think, the last 14 years or so of our parish, so thank you. And we welcome uh, Denise, uh, Denise Lyons, who's our new pastor who started in January and is already finding a, a great learning. Uh, and so thank you for that part. <laughs> to Long Jonas, who's back, who was one of the first, and uh, an off the first assistants to our parish, and Sang has joined our team as well. So thank you for how we together serve this community that is so filled with love for, uh, for us, but also for our God. 
And so to you, our faith community, I thank you on behalf of our team for your love, your dedication, your faithfulness and your prayerfulness. You've carried us in such extraordinary times. You've carried this prayer and dream for our church. Your faithfulness to God and our church has truly been amazing as you astound us as leaders of our faith community. The 41 years that we've carried continue in our hearts and our story, uh, where worship and service is a reality that each of one of us is called to be. May the church uh, forever welcome people of worship and service in this community of Keysborough, but may always be an outlet and a sign of God's loving and healing presence. May we do that as this community, motivated by love, respect, hope and joy for all and for anyone who comes in need. May God continue to bless us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks for coming. I'm going to make a long speech. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord be with you. In the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who and May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.